Hi everyone, this week's Parsha, Parshat Vayetze, is rich with lessons that can speak to our lives. And so I'm going to give a quick summary of what happens and then talk about a couple of the themes that speak to me. So Jacob is on his way out of the land of Israel and he's just left his mother's house. He's running away. He had received or taken the birthright, depending on how you're looking at it. And he's really going into an unknown kind of journey. And on his way out of Israel, he stops in a place that's called the place. And the sages tell us that this is the place where later on the holy temple would be built. And Jacob's dream in this place is of angels descending and ascending. And he's given promises by God that this place will be a place that his children inherit and come to worship. And after this holy experience that Jacob has of this dream, where he is reassured that God is with him, he goes to the land of Haran. And Haran is a place where his uncle, his mother's brother, Lavan, lives and is going to take him in. And Lavan, we come to find out, is a bit of a swindler. And he's got two daughters, Rachel and Leah. He first promises Rachel to Jacob, who Jacob loves. But Jacob does not get to marry Rachel because when he gets to the wedding altar, it is Leah that is there waiting for him. And so now Jacob has to work and labor another seven years so that he has officially earned both daughters' hands in marriage. He does go on to have six sons with Leah. He has two sons with Rachel who has trouble having a child. And so there are matters of faith and of prayer that are part of Rachel's journey so that she can transition from being barren to having Joseph and Benjamin. And finally, after Jacob has his family, and it's been about 14 years that he's lived with Lavon and sort of put up with the wheeler dealer nature of Lavon, he is ready to go back to his homeland and Lavon persuades him to stay. And he offers him sheep and he says he's gonna make him a wealthy man. And Jacob does prosper, even though Lavon is always trying to swindle him. And after about six more years, Jacob leaves. And Lavon tries to prevent him from leaving, but he has a dream that he will have divine rep retribution for trying to keep Jacob from returning to the land of Israel. And so on Jacob's way and through his intention to leave and go back, he and Lavon make a pact and they sort of have a meeting of the minds and Jacob and his family start to proceed towards the Holy Land. So now that we've got our summary down, we're gonna talk about the tests that Jacob went through. And we all know that the patriarchs and the matriarchs went through a variety of tests that were supposed to refine them. And one of Jacob's biggest tests was that he had to hold on to truth. And he had to know what was right, even while living in the home of his uncle, Lavon. Again, who was known as a very schemy character. His uncle cheats him by not going through with the plans for him to marry Rachel. He's deceitful about business dealings. And Jacob has to choose honesty through all of Lavon's behavior for a couple of decades. The duality of these two men, Jacob and Lavon, is something that we encounter in ourselves and in our lives. The archetype of the trickster who uses false claims to get what he or she wants, and the archetype of the honest one who lives from honesty regardless of what life throws at him or her. When we look at this as two aspects of ourselves, the aspect of ourselves that is honest and in acceptance of reality, and the part of us that lies to get something that it wants, we get this lesson that we have to hang on to truth even when the going gets tough and even when we're under pressure or we're hurting. And that we have internal reservoirs, like Jacob, of strength and faith to rely on and resource to help us through any challenges that we might face. And ultimately, we also get the lesson that we have the power to choose how we handle the tricksters in our lives and the trickster part of ourselves. Another powerful metaphor that is written all over Jacob's life is the idea of taking a journey, literally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, circumstantially. He leaves his homeland, Israel, and he goes to his uncle's land, Haran. He really descends to Haran. And the reason that I use the word descend is because Haran in Hebrew expresses heat, anger, 
and turbulence. And so Haran represents the turbulence that we all go through when we leave our homeland, our peaceful place. We have the same job and sacred duty to go out into the world and figure out how we can elevate and be elevated by our experiences. We have to go through the turbulence in order to be elevated, but it's a commitment to honesty that allows us to have that outcome. May we all have the strength to be honest with ourselves and in our lives, and may we be elevated by the challenges that we encounter. Shabbat Shalom.